All right, in this final section of the course, we'll be looking at annuities. So our goal is to apply our knowledge of geometric series to study annuities. So we'll be talking about money, interest, compounding interest, and making regular payments. So let's start with compounding interest, compounded interest. Now assume that P dollars is invested at an interest rate of R. This interest might be compounded continuously, daily, monthly, yearly, etc. So we want to find the amount A of T in the account after T years. So that's the goal of that section. So let's do an example to see, and then we'll have the formula. Example 9.3.1. Assume that Mila invests $100 at an interest rate of 12%. Assume that the interest rate is compounded yearly. So find the amount A of T in the account after T years. So yearly means that once a year, the bank looks at Mila accounts and gives her 12% um, on what's already there. So at year zero, at year zero, she would have $100. Um, at year one, she would get $100 that she had plus 12% interest. So 12% times 100, that's $112. All right, um, after another year. So the reason we talked about compounding interest is that the interest in year two in part is interest on the interest that was already applied in year one. So instead of having interest only in um, on the $100 that she started with, they're gonna, there's gonna be interest on the $100 and the $12. So it's gonna be $112 plus 12% of $112. And so let me, I mean, let me write this in a nicer way. So here in that case, that's 100, and 100 is here in both terms. So I'll factor it out, and then we'll see a nice pattern emerging, um, 12 on 100. I can even write that as 0 0.12. So when I write an interest rate of 12%, I mean an interest rate of 0 0.12. Now, if I do a similar thing here with year two, I'll have 112 times one plus 0 0.12, but this is already 100 times 1 plus 0 0.12, so it's going to be 100, and then I can see the interest coming into play for year 1, and then multiplying by 0 0.12 gives, 1 plus 0 0.12 gives you the interest for year 2, so really here I get 100, 1 plus 0 0.12 squared. All right, so if I put a one here, this and this is quite similar. I can even extend it to that one. I can think of this as one plus uh, 0 0.12 to the zero. That would just be one. And so all of these seem to indicate that I should take 100, which is the initial investment. And then I take one plus the interest rate and I put the number of years as the exponent. All right, now I want to compound this interest monthly. That means every month the bank will look at Mila's account and determine how much interest they have to pay. And then month two, she will earn interest on the original amount and also on the interest from month one and then month three. And so money is going to come in more often, which means that it's going to grow faster. All right, so let's start month zero. That would be $100. <coughs> now for month one, she would earn interest on the $100. She will not earn 12% because it's 12% per year. So 12% per year means 0 0.12 every year. So every month, she'll get 0.12 divided by 12, she'll get 0 
All right, then month two, she'll get 100, um, 1 plus 0 0.1, and she'll get a second payment on it, and so on. And after a year, she'll get 100, 1 plus 0 0.1 times 12, uh, to the 12. And so this is t equal to 1. Right, we want t to be in years, not in months. So for t equals to one, we want to get 100 times one plus 0.1 to the 12. And so if I have a of t, that will be 100, one plus 0 0.1 to the 12 t. Right, this is the number of months. Every month we get interest rate. Right? So the number of months would give us the number of times the bank actually pays interest, all right? So, and then here, this is 0 0.12 divided by 12, yearly interest divided by the number of months in a year. All right, so let's try to recap this. I mean, I don't want you to have to go through this argument and this logic every time. So let's write a proposition that tells us how to handle different cases. So proposition 9.3.1, compounded interest. Assume that P dollars is invested at an interest rate of R. The following table gives the amount A of T in the account after T years, depending on how frequently the interest is compounded. So in this column, I have frequency of compounding. And in this column, I have amount in the account after T years. So if it's compounded yearly, that was our first example, we take the amount and then we take one plus R and we raise that to the number of years. All right, so this is what we found right here. For monthly, which was the second example, we first divide the interest by 12 to get the monthly interest. And then we raise it to the power of 12 t, which is the number of months in t years. All right, and you have the same logic for weekly, daily, every minute, um, every hour, every whatever you want. So if the interest is compounded m times a year, you would get p 1 plus r divided by m, and then you multiply t by m. We saw an extreme case of this where it's compounded continuously, which means every little time interval you get money injected into your account. And in that one, you got the PERT formula, P e to the RT. All right, so the first person who thought of compounding interest rate continuously was Jacob Bernoulli. It led him to define the constant that we know as E since the limit as you, this is the number of times in a year you would compound, you can increase that. Why stop at monthly when you could do weekly? Why stop at weekly when you can do daily, daily and so on, hourly, minutely, secondly. And so you could keep going like this. And if you take M to infinity, which means that you would compound every little second, you actually end up with this formula, which is why it comes up here. So Bernoulli was a Swiss mathematician. He cared about banking. Um, he came up with this and he came up with a constant E, but he called it B. So it was later called E by Euler. Jacob Bernoulli is the brother of Johann Bernoulli who discovered Le Futal's rule. So this is two brothers who were really good at math, but um, weren't very lucky, let's put it that way. All right, so let's do one more example like this. Uh, example 9.3.2, assume that Marco invests today in an account with an interest rate of 4% compounded monthly. Assume that in 20 years, the account contains $150,000. How much money did Marco invest today? So A of T is uh, monthly, so this is the formula we have, P, 1 plus R is 4, so 4%, 4 which means 0 0.04, divided by 12, because the rate is yearly, 12T. And we know that A of 20 
um, 20 is to 40 here. This is equal to $150,000. And so if we want P, uh, we just have to divide this by 1.004 divided by 12 to 40. And I'm sorry, I forgot to compute this apparently. So let me compute it right away. Uh, that's $150,000, 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 12 to the exponent 240. And I got, don't forget to round it to, um, sorry, yeah, 67489 And I'm going to round it to the first cent, so 0.8. That's how much money. Sorry, <laughs> that's how much money. I'm sorry, I'm going to be able to draw a box around the whole thing anytime now. All right, that's how much money he invested originally to end up with $150,000 20 years later.